Our good old solar system is actually a pretty bizarre place. Well, with all its out-of-this-world phenomena that we humans haven't managed to explain yet, there are rumors that a gigantic, undiscovered planet is hiding behind Neptune. Volcanoes on Pluto spew ice. And a colossal canyon on Mars can accommodate the whole U.S. territory and most of Cleveland. Well, let's figure out if it's true by talking about the most mystifying solar system facts. The solar system is 4.6 billion years old. So old, it's a senior solar system. Scientists came to this conclusion after they studied the oldest material they managed to get a hold of. And by that, I mean meteorites, of course. You won't be able to wear a hat on Venus, ever, and just try to stand on your feet. The planet is insanely windy. Its upper winds blow 50 times faster than the planet rotates. What's more, these fierce winds never stop and can get even stronger with time. Want to get away? You'll have to travel 11 billion miles away from Earth before ever leaving the solar system. Take your Google Maps with you. You probably heard of methane gas, a byproduct of natural processes such as volcanic activity and cows. Anyway, this gas is not only a part of the Martian atmosphere, but also the thing that confuses astronomers to no end. The thing is that the volume of methane on Mars keeps wavering, and scientists just can't figure out where it might be coming from. Can there be cows on Mars? As you may remember, Pluto used to be a planet but was stripped of this title in 2006. Later, it was reclassified as a dwarf planet. Gee, make up your mind! But the most unexpected fact about this celestial body is that its diameter is smaller than that of the US. See for yourself. The greatest distance across the country, from Maine to Northern California, is about 2,800 miles. As for Pluto, it's only 1,473 miles across. The planet Uranus, or Uranus, you can't win either way, rotates on its side, and astronomers have no idea why the planet has chosen such an unusual position. The culprits could be ancient mega-powerful collisions, but so far it's just a theory. By the way, this is the only planet laying on its side. Our Sun is insanely massive. Want some proof? Well, 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system is in the mass of the Sun. In particular, the hydrogen and helium it's made of. The remaining 0.14% is mostly the mass of the solar system's eight planets. Earth might not be the only tectonically active planet in the solar system. Astronomers have spotted some landforms looking like cliffs on Mercury. If it's so, the tectonic activity could explain the rapid shrinking of the planet. In most sci-fi movies about space, the main character gets into an asteroid belt and must dodge countless rocks that threaten to damage their spacecraft. Well, sorry to disappoint, but that's nothing like the real thing. The only asteroid belt astronomers know about is located between Mars and Jupiter. There are thousands of asteroids in this region, but they're so widely spaced that the chance of collision is next to nothing. Ah, you just ruined it. Sorry. Behind the orbit of Neptune lies the mysterious Kuiper Belt, filled with massive icy objects. The most curious thing about this space formation, though, is that scientists can't explain the pattern of its movement. The only explanation they have is that Neptune might be hiding a ginormous planet from our sight. This hypothetical planet has already got the name Planet 9, and all we have to do is wait until its existence is confirmed. Or not. Volcanoes on Earth are as different from those on Pluto as fire and ice. And I mean it. While we have volcanoes spilling lava on our planet, the volcanoes on Pluto spit ice. When frozen water expands, and this enormous pressure builds up until one day, bang, the ice erupts. In the process, a new cryovolcano gets formed. One of Saturn's moons, Lapidus, has a unique color. It's two-toned. One of its hemispheres is light and the other is eerily dark. Scientists haven't figured out this mystery yet. There's another weird thing about Pluto, or rather, about its atmosphere. First, it rises way higher above the surface of the dwarf planet than, for example, the Earth's atmosphere. What's more, 
the atmosphere on Pluto has more than 20 layers, and all of them are super cold and very condensed. We live inside the Sun. No, I don't mean that we're inhabitants of the red-hot ball of light approximately 93 million miles away. The thing is that the Sun's atmosphere stretches far beyond its visible surface, and our planet is right within its reach. In fact, it's the gusts of solar wind that create the breathtaking phenomenon known as the Northern and Southern Lights. The ocean on Jupiter is larger than any other on the rest of the solar system's planets. But wait! It's not the type of ocean you're thinking about. The one on Jupiter isn't made of water. This mesmerizing thing consists of metallic hydrogen, and its depth is a staggering 25,000 miles, which is almost the same as the circumference of the Earth. The Sun's atmosphere is hotter than the surface of the star. While on the surface, the temperature reaches 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the upper atmosphere heats up to millions of degrees. Scientists suspect that explosive bursts of heat from the Sun may have something to do with this unique phenomenon. People came to know about Saturn's beautiful rings in the 1600s. But only recently, it became apparent that Saturn isn't the only ringed planet. All the gas giant planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter, have rings of their own, but they're thin and almost impossible to see. As for Mars, Venus, and Earth, they're made of rocky materials and have no rings whatsoever. Our solar system isn't the only one in the Milky Way galaxy. Far from it. The galaxy we live in houses about 100 billion solar systems. And if that's just our galaxy alone, can you imagine how many there are in the whole universe? At any given moment here on Earth, you can stumble across a rock that's arrived from Mars. After scientists analyzed the chemical content of some meteorites found in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica, and other places on our planet, they came to the shocking conclusion that they have a Martian origin. Since Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, many people simply assume that it's also the hottest. And that's where they get it wrong, because, in fact, Venus, which is about 30 million miles further from the Sun than Mercury, is way hotter. The thing is that Venus has an incredibly thick atmosphere, which is 100 times denser than the one we have on Earth. On top of that, this atmosphere consists almost entirely of carbon dioxide, also known as a greenhouse gas. These factors make the temperatures on the planet rise to a staggering 875 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to melt lead. As for Mercury, its maximum temperatures reach only 800 degrees. Jupiter's moon, Io, exists in never-ending chaos due to hundreds of smoking volcanoes on its surface. If you ever visit this place, send me a postcard. Now, you'll see the smoke from these volcanoes billowing up high into Lowe's atmosphere. The most enormous volcano in the whole solar system, at least that we know of, is on Mars. The size of this monster is almost as great as the state of Arizona, and its height is as big as that of Mount Everest. How did it grow this huge? The answer is simple. There's much less gravity on Mars in comparison with our planet. Even if you're a tiny celestial body, you can still have a moon of your own. Hey, it's not that hard. In 1993, the Galileo probe was traveling past a miniature asteroid that was no bigger than 20 miles across and discovered the little thing had a one-mile-wide moon. Since then, astronomers have found tons of moons orbiting minor planets in our solar system. The valley called Valles Marineris on Mars is more than 10 times larger than Earth's Grand Canyon. And it's another thing that puzzles astronomers. After all, Mars isn't a planet with active plate tectonics. On the surface of Jupiter, there's a weird region that's called the Great Red Spot. Recently, astronomers have concluded that this spot is actually a storm that's been raging on the planet for centuries. But some 20 years ago, scientists noticed that the red region started to shrink. Nowadays, it's just half the size it used to be. And still, the spot is one and a half times bigger than Earth. How about you? Do you know any other unusual facts about our solar system that I've missed? Then let me know down in the comments. If you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But hey, don't go space traveling just yet!
we have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. All you have to do is pick the left or right video, click on it, and enjoy. Stay on the bright side of life. The profession of an astronaut is probably one of the most intriguing and mysterious out there. But have you ever wondered about the details of their everyday life? Like what's going on under those bulky spacesuits? I mean, some people seriously believe that astronauts wear paper underwear. Others are sure that a lack of gravity allows the grime to just float away. If only. The thing is, astronauts don't do laundry at all. In 2011, NASA commissioned a washing machine for the International Space Station. Was it a joke? In any case, astronauts couldn't use it for apparent reasons. Delivering water to the ISS just to do laundry sounds outrageous and super costly. So, astronauts can only dream of freshly laundered linens and other stuff. Instead, fresh clothes get delivered to the station from Earth just like any other supplies. Unfortunately, it happens not that often since the price of launching literally anything into space is exorbitant. So, astronauts have to wear their clothes for way longer than they would otherwise do on Earth. The only thing that makes this situation a bit better is that astronauts tend to lose some of their sense of smell in space. When interviewed, some astronauts admitted wearing, for example, the same pair of shorts for months and only changing their underwear once every three or four days. It's probably not surprising that astronauts dress not to impress but for comfort and convenience. Their typical attire usually consists of short-sleeved shirts and long cargo pants. Those are regular clothes we wear on Earth, nothing special. But when they leave the climate-controlled insides of the ISS, of course, they need special clothes. By that, I mean those very chunky spacesuits. They protect astronauts from insane temperature swings ranging from 250 degrees Fahrenheit in the sun to minus 250 degrees in the shade. But even with all this protection and cooling tubes wicking away body heat, spacewalks tend to cause astronauts to work up a sweat. Wearing an EVA, which stands for extravehicular activities, can mean hours of hard work. And don't forget that astronauts often wear layers to stay warm and pressurized. And these layers include an inner form-fitting item of clothing that resembles long underwear. This item is often reworn and even shared. And since there are no washing machines on the ISS, you get the point, right? An interesting fact. There is a specially trained person who smells every single thing that astronauts take with them into space. It's done to protect them from unpleasant or toxic odors. The thing is that you can't really air the room out there in space if you don't like how it smells inside. That's why NASA is very careful about what kind of odors can pass through. At the same time, nothing can prevent the smells that appear already on the ISS. Anyway. Spacesuits and what's underneath them are used again and again, and soon you start worrying not only about bad smells, but also about hygiene and health problems. An alarming possibility of biocontamination arises. It includes bacteria, body fluids, and other foreign substances. It gets worse if we think about longer missions, for instance, to the moon. At the same time, it's totally impractical to wash spacesuit interiors on a consistent basis. Water is too valuable on the ISS to waste it on something so mundane. That's why NASA, along with the European Space Agency and other organizations, asked specialists to develop fabrics that could solve the problem of biocontamination in suits. You see, during the shuttle program conducted by NASA, spacesuits were supposed to be used on quite short two-week trips. But then, astronauts started living on the ISS for much longer periods of time. That's why the spacesuit's lifespan had to be extended up to six years. No wonder microbes became a much more worrying issue than before. So more than a decade ago, a team of experts began to research different methods of getting rid of microbes and bacteria dwelling in spacesuits. They cut textiles in two-inch squares and put them in petri dishes and grew a few species of fungi and bacteria on these samples. Some of the fabrics they used were infused with copper. This substance has impressive antimicrobial properties. When bacteria touch this element, their cell walls and membranes get destabilized. The metal's ions damage microbes, making them more vulnerable. 
NASA scientists also tried using textiles treated with silica and silver. The latter turned out to be as toxic to germs on contact as copper. After observing the stuff that had grown on the fabrics for the past 14 days, the researchers discovered that only one compound had managed to keep bacteria and fungi at bay. It was a solution of silver molecules normally used for disinfecting hospital dressings and other stuff. But the ions of this metal turned out to be too good at their job because they got rid of everything, literally. And total sterility could do more harm than good. We need a balanced ecosystem consisting of millions of microorganisms to keep our organs and skin healthy. In 2022, NASA hired U.S. companies Axiom Space and Collins Aerospace to develop the next generation of spacesuits. And soon, a prototype suit appeared. It was designed to be used during the Artemis III mission. The main goal of this voyage is to land a crew at the south pole of our natural satellite. These spacesuits are supposed to use textiles with antimicrobial properties that can potentially reduce biocontamination. The cooling system of these suits will also add biocides in its water loops, which will help prevent microbial buildup. Now let's talk about spacesuits in more detail. To begin with, there are actually two main types of spacesuits. You've probably seen the Advanced Crew Escape Suit, aka the Orange Suit, aka the Pumpkin Suit. Astronauts wear this full-pressure suit during takeoff, or rather liftoff, since we're talking about a spaceship. These suits are irreplaceable for those who are heading for super high altitudes. There, the pressure is so low that people can't survive without a special protective suit. And while air crews wear partial pressure suits, space crews have to be protected by full pressure suits. After all, they travel way, way higher. The suit is also equipped with lots of things that can help an astronaut survive emergencies during a spaceship launch or landing. A regular pumpkin suit is stocked with flares, medications, survival gear, a radio, and a parachute. So, in short, astronauts couldn't live through the process of leaving Earth without the orange suit. But why did its designers choose this hue? The main reason for picking the orange color is that this hue is one of the most visible for search and rescue, including very probable sea rescue. As for EVAs, their purpose is different. Astronauts wear these suits when they set off on spacewalks. It can protect them from the severe conditions of outer space with its extreme temperatures and near vacuum. Plus, the spacesuit can prevent small debris from hurting space travelers. You've probably noticed that EVA suits are much bulkier than the orange ones. That's because they have many layers of insulation and heavy protective fabric. They also contain breathable air, drinkable water, and temperature controls. Now, every time an astronaut goes on a spacewalk, they use a tether that ties them to the space station. And in case the tether breaks, the EVA suit has a backup system. This system includes small jet thrusters which can be controlled from the station with the help of a joystick. As for the color, first of all, white reflects the heat of the sun better than other colors, and astronauts don't get too hot. Plus, the white color is the best when it comes to spotting the tiny dot of an astronaut against the vast expanse of black space. Another curious detail. While white spacesuits protect astronauts from getting too hot, they can't prevent them from getting too cold. And that's when special gloves come into play. They have special heaters which keep astronauts' fingers cozy and functioning. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. We interrupt this program to bring you this important message. The Earth is no longer fit for living, so you'll need to find your own new home. You immediately get the brilliant idea to apply for a job as an astronaut. You'll be able to wait over the hustle and bustle on the International Space Station until humanity finds a new home, right? The longest time a human has spent in space so far is 437 days and a few extra hours. And when I say in space, I mean the ISS, because a human being without the proper equipment in open space would only last a few seconds. The ISS is designed to support human life in space for extended periods of time. Extended, but not endless. 
The station gets resupplied with food, water, air, fuel, scientific equipment, and other necessities every three months. With no Earth or humans to send the mission, this lifeline will soon be broken. The station is a huge ship moving through space at over 17,000 miles per hour. It faces pretty harsh conditions, from radiation to micrometeoroids and huge temperature ups and downs. That's why the system regularly needs patching up. In addition to wear and tear, there are also unexpected events that can require resupply missions. In 2020, the crew discovered a leak that was causing a gradual loss of air pressure. They eventually found cracks in one of the modules. The crew managed to fix it, but it proves how important it is to have enough spare parts on board. Let's say the future humans will manage to find a way to run the station non-stop without restocking. Astronauts already grow plants in space in closed boxes with low-energy LED lights. It's not only a source of vitamins, without which humans can't survive, but a great mood booster. We'd also need more advanced closed-loop life support systems to recycle air and water efficiently. It's a system that captures carbon dioxide from the air by passing it through small beads. Then it uses steam to separate the carbon dioxide and transform it into methane and water. Water then divides back into oxygen. But even with all the possible advances, there's another problem. The health of the astronauts. They live and work in a microgravity environment, and they rely on carefully controlled life support systems. But our bodies aren't designed to live in weightlessness forever. It's like standing on your head, because the reduced gravity makes bodily fluids accumulate in the upper parts of your body. The result is a puffy red face. The gravitational force on the ISS is weaker than on Earth, so muscles don't have to work as hard and bones gradually lose their density. That's why each crew member follows a strict daily exercise routine. The heart muscle also weakens because it doesn't have to use as much effort to circulate blood throughout the body. Without Earth's protective atmosphere, astronauts are continuously exposed to cosmic rays. They are invisible waves that can cause some serious health issues. So maybe we're better off opting for Mars or the Moon for an alternative home. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.